It sounds like prioritizing. Basically. Yeah, huge. Your calendar is a reflection of your priorities. So if you want to get healthy and lose weight, but your calendar doesn't have things to show that on there, you're not going to. If your priorities are, you know, you want to grow your business, but then your whole calendar is going out to the movies and <laughs> you're not going to grow your business. So your calendar is a reflection of that. And my calendar is time blocked out from the moment I open my eyes until the moment I go to bed. And the miracle morning is, I mean, a huge chunk of that. What's up, Mom Nation? I am back. It's Real Estate Katie, and I am back with another episode of Live and Learn. This is probably my most favorite show, you guys, because this is when I get to have our amazing mama members come on with me, go live in the group to you all, and we teach you something. So most of the, actually all of the time, 100% of the time, my mama guest that comes on is extremely knowledgeable in what they are teaching today, what they're, um, you know, showing us today. And the idea of this show is to have tips and tricks or specialized knowledge that you can take and you can implement right away. And I'm really, really excited to talk to you, Crystal, because yeah. I think this is so important. So welcome, Crystal. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here and just connect with you and everyone out there in Mom Nation. I love doing this kind of stuff. Heck yeah. Well, we love having you. And it looks like we already have a commenter. What's up, Nikki? So um, before we get started, though, Crystal, I, I know that we have a lot to dive into and it's a super important topic to me. So I'm, um, again, super stoked that you're here. I just wanted to do a quick shout out to my friend Lydia Palomino with Flower Power Cakery. And that's flour spelled like, you know, the ingredient that you use in cake, <laughs> which is kind of a fun play on words. I absolutely love her name. And um, she is making cakes and cupcakes. And I got to tell you, Crystal, they're absolutely amazing. I had one two weeks ago for my birthday. And not only was it stunning, but it was absolutely delicious as well. And I know that she does custom orders. Uh, for instance, I know that she just did a sugar free cake the other day. So if you all out there, sorry, Crystal, I know you are not, no longer Phoenix-based. She's Phoenix-based. Um, but if you all out there need a cake for an upcoming birthday celebration, a cake smash, um, whatever it is that you need, reach out to my buddies over at Flower Power and you can find them on Facebook. Speaking of Facebook, we can find you on Facebook too, can't we, Crystal? Yeah, I don't have a business page, but I am Crystal Wilson and my page is public. I mean... I live my journey and my life out loud and anyone can go check me out very easily. <laughs> I love it. Well, let's hop right into it. Today, we are talking about the importance of a morning routine and how to create your morning routine. And before we hopped on the show, we had kind of talked a little bit about it. And this doesn't mean that like everybody has to have the same morning routine, right? Can you speak a little bit to the morning routine, why it's important and why it's important to customize it to you? Yeah, I think, you know, and just a little backstory too is before I used to chase the day, I would wake up when my kids woke up, I would be rushing and getting dressed and throwing everything everywhere. And I felt like my anxiety was high and I was just like, trying to chase the day, like trying to figure life out. Um, and then I heard and started learning about a miracle morning. Um, and that changed my life. And so what everyone's miracle morning can look like can be different because it's what fills your soul and what brings you joy. So you may breathe and meditate and read and drink coffee. You might read scripture. Um, you might go for a walk, but what you're doing is you're giving yourself time to center so that you can go meet the world, go take care of the kids, go start your job, um, you know, connect with the hubby or spouse or whatever your, you know, whatever that means to you. Um, but the importance is giving yourself the time to do it is, is the biggest piece. And I think that a lot of us, especially when we just come into motherhood and like, let's face it, I, I don't care who you are. Like none of us know what we're doing, <laughs> you know? We just kind of are like, wow, this is my life now. And I have this thing that I have to grow and, you know, nurture and, and keep safe and all of this kind of stuff. And there really is no rule book to this. Um, I have always said that my mom, my grandma, everybody in my life could have told me absolutely everything they know to the best of their ability. And yet I could still not have ever been prepared for motherhood. 
I just, I just personally think it's impossible to be and feel completely prepared and know exactly what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. So it kind of hits you like that, right? It hits you like a ton of bricks. And now you're having to sort of redo um, all of your processes because it's no longer about you anymore. It's not just you that you have to worry about. You have all these other things going on and then pack on a spouse, pack on a household, pack on a job. Um, you know, I think we all know how that feels and we all feel that stress and anxiety. So you um, take us back to when you realized uh, this isn't going to work. I need to make a change. And what did that look like for you? Yeah. I mean, for the first two and a half years of my daughter's life, I was flying by the seat of my pants. <laughs> um, I was in an unhealthy place also. And so when I realized it is when I started to slowly realize, like, this isn't working. I am not showing up for her. I'm not patient. I am like yelling all the time. Um, we're not maybe doing the things that we want to, but also I run my own business. And so if I don't get certain things done and she wakes up, then I don't get anything done. And so then it infects income. And so all these things can play into it. And so when I started to slowly take care of myself health wise, I realized the importance of the morning time. Um, luckily, my daughter sleeps in pretty late, so my morning is a little nice, <laughs> but <laughs> but that can vary. And so really sticking to the things that I set for myself was a huge piece. Um, and what I realized is doing that the night before is going to set me up for success the next morning. And so when I started to do that, and I'll tell you, I'm not consistent, and I but... I can realize the difference now even more when I don't give myself that time um, because that awareness is there. Like yep. I've had a taste of it. Um, and so, you know, one thing that I learned was, I don't know how much you know about rocks, pebbles, and sand, um, but there's this beautiful story about we fill our lives with all of this stuff and bringing intention to that. So rocks are like non-negotiables. These are the things that are going to do for me, self-care, time with my spouse, uh, you know, time with my family, all this stuff. And then your pebbles, book club, you know, coffee with a friend. And then you have your sand, watching TV, scrolling Facebook and, you know, all of these things. And so when I started to dial into that, what are my rocks? Um, that became part of my routine, my mm. morning, my time. Um, and so you get really focused on what do I want to accomplish? Because we can just be busy, right? All of us are busy. We all got stuff going on. But right. how do we be intentional about our time? And that morning time gives you the time to be intentional about what, how you want to show up in that day and how you want to. And that's what I recognize the most is how that all started to shift. It sounds like prioritizing. Basically. Yeah, huge. Your calendar is a reflection of your priorities. So if you want to get healthy and lose weight, but your calendar doesn't have things to show that on there, you're not going to. If your priorities are, you know, you want to grow your business, but then your whole calendar is going out to the movies and <laughs> you're not going to grow your business. So your calendar is a reflection of that. And my calendar is time blocked out from the moment I open my eyes until the moment I go to bed. And the miracle morning is, I mean, a huge chunk of that. Totally agree. Same here. I had the realization a couple of years ago as well. I knew that I needed to do something about my morning. I knew that I needed to prioritize my morning and things changed pretty quickly and in a big, big way once I started doing that. And, you know, I feel like it, it also like energetically helps to put some attention on yourself because it's another thing that we lose as moms. Where does that go? I, I don't even know when that happened. Like, when did I think that I wasn't important to take care of once this, this little bundle of joy came along? I'm not really sure when that moment was, but I know that I had that moment at some point. And I know that a lot of you sharing that with me. Um, and like you, I noticed my health began to decline, um, pants got tighter, that kind of thing. And I felt, I didn't feel myself. I didn't feel well. And so I too, um, sat down, decided, okay, what are my priorities? What do I know I need to accomplish in the morning? And, um, you know, now it's an everyday occasion. Uh, actually I get one day off, um, but I get up and work out, drink my protein shake, have a little bit of time with my family. That's all planned out. Just like you said, and most of the time it works like clockwork. I do feel like, like you said, you know, sometimes you're not consistent. I feel like we need to give ourselves a little bit of grace in that instance, because once we start beating ourselves up that 
oh my gosh, I didn't do it today. I didn't do my thing. Then that, that becomes a cycle for some of us. Right. And it gets even bigger and it's a big snowball. And now all of a sudden we suck at everything and that's really difficult to pull yourself out of. So can you speak a bit to giving yourself grace and different tricks and tips to get yourself back on track once that happens? Yeah, I'm a huge believer in focusing on the gain and many, many of us live in the gap. And I was someone that lived there where we're beating ourselves up. We've got this negative roommate. We're looking at, this is the ideal person I want to be. Why am I not there yet? And then you're just in your pit. And then I always say, then you're calling Martha Stewart to decorate your pit because you just want to hang out there where really focusing on the gain and saying, what did I accomplish today? You know, what did I shift? And just reflecting on that at nighttime. Um, like I said, setting yourself up at n- the night before the success is going to be there. So, you know, every night for me, I will journal on how did the day go? What do I need to shift? What were my wins? What am I grateful for? Um, but what do I need to shift? Where's that awareness and accepting it and being okay? Like, so our emotions are just data. They're not, they're not who we are. And so when you hold on to that emotion is when you get stuck. Yeah, And so just kind of bringing that awareness and making those lists and saying, okay, so what can I shift tomorrow? Um, but also meeting yourself where you're at. If you wake up at nine o'clock in the morning, every morning, you are not going to start waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Right. Like that's just not going to be realistic. So something I do is when I get off path, I recognize it, I shift it. And then I work in 15 minute increments. So, you know, setting that alarm 15 minutes early, every three days or so. Um, and really just working myself back to my ultimate goal of, you know, my goal is five fifteen, five thirty. 30. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so shifting that and just, again, data, you know, being aware, accepting it. And so that you can shift forward. Um, but why is it all important to you? That's a huge way to get out of that negative self-talk. Why is waking up early and giving yourself or whatever, giving yourself that routine in the morning important to you? For me, I don't yell at my daughter as much. And when I don't yell at my daughter as much, she doesn't yell at me as much. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and, you know, I'm more organized in my business. I get more things done. I feel more productive around the household. It gets, you know, I'm, I'm conscious with my time. We get out and play. So my daughter time is more present as yeah. well. So why, why are these things important to you is a huge reason why uh, or a way to to find that flow of moving forward, I guess is what I'm looking for. (laughs) Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I love what you said about journaling. And I think that that is more important. Hey guys, this is going to be important. (laughs) I think that is more important than what people actually think, especially if they don't journal. Now, what I have learned, and I've been doing this for a really long time, what I have learned is I can start to see patterns. So I can see that this pattern keeps showing up. Do I like that pattern? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to keep that pattern going. Or do I not like that pattern? So we're going to start working on changing that pattern. And that's what I've really noticed with journaling for myself. It's been because it's, it's hard to remember what goes on. You know, sometimes I have a hard time what happened that day. Never mind trying to remember what happened last week and trying to remember what consistently happened last week. Like we're dealing with a lot of stuff as business owners, or if we work for somebody else, that's still, you know, a full-time job is a full-time job, Um, you know, as moms, as heads of the household or whatever our titles are, like there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, And it's difficult to remember those small things. And those small things can make really big differences when you take the bird's eye view. Um, Another thing that I absolutely love about what you said, and I do this morning and night, and some people might hear this and think I'm absolutely crazy, but I will tell you that it works and it's, it's a mysterious thing. I don't know. Maybe your mom can explain it to me. Um, (laughs) But at night, her mom's a Reiki master, super intuitive, like amazing. (laughs) That's another conversation for another day. Um, But at night I write down my goals and those change. So it's not, you know, Some are big goals, some are small goals. Um, Once I achieve that goal, I'll replace it with something else that I'm wanting to do. Right now, I have eight consistent goals. Like I said, range from small to big, range from long-term to short-term. And I write those goals every night and every morning. And I walk around with this notebook. And like when I travel, people are like, what the hell are you doing? Like, what? you have a notebook? Like, who has a notebook these days? Uh, But I do. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, you know, what I've found from doing this over a long period of time 
is I go back and I'm like, holy crap, that came to fruition. Wow, that actually happened. And I know that there's an explanation for it. I don't personally have that explanation. Like I said, maybe your mom does. Maybe you do. Um, I have a little bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Throw it at me. Tell me why that works. So I don't know how much you know or anyone out there knows about visualization. Um, and this is actually something that I do, but our brains don't know the difference of reality, something happening. And if we're just visualizing it, um, there's a study that was done with like basketball players that when they visualize themselves doing free throws, they get them more. So a part of my routine also is very similar of taking a couple minutes in visualizing. So writing down your goals is a piece of that. But when you visualize yourself in the space of where you want to be, your brain starts to believe it it starts to know that it's true. And so what happens is you start doing the actions to work towards that because your brain already believes it's true. And this is actually like super science-based. So um, when you're writing down your goals and getting really clear, your, your actions can line up to that, right? We set an address in a GPS. We know where to go, right? If we don't set that address, we're just driving around all willy nilly, not know where to go. Um, you know, when you're looking at a glass with mud and it's, you, you can't see through it, but the more clear you get writing down those goals, visualizing the water's going to get clearer and you're going to see through it and see to that next point. Um, and there's science based in getting your thoughts down your arm and onto paper and then visualize visually seeing it. Um, there's power in speaking it out loud. And so you know, the visualization and the journaling can be a part of that morning because you're setting your intentions for the day. Where do I want to go today? What do I want to do today? What do I want to accomplish? Who do I want to show up as? You know, how do I want to present myself? How do I want to leave people at my end of my day? Um, you know, and the last thing I just want to say on that is like, and this is totally not even related to what you're saying, but <laughs> I heard on a podcast once that said kids, they, you know, more is caught than taught. And so as parents, us starting these foundations and writing down our goals and visualizing these things and taking this time for us, we can tell our kids to do it all day and say it's good. But unless we are practicing it and we are doing it, they are not going to catch on to it mm -hmm. um, because they're watching and learning and picking things up. And they're going to take more of that into their adulthood than us, whatever we actually sat down and taught them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, starting a journal with yourself, starting a journal with your kids, right? Having your kids roll, write down their goals every morning, you know, how do they want to show up? And, and it's just, it can be a family affair when you start on yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that and love that and appreciate that, that uh, explanation. One more thing that I kind of wanted to pull out of what you had said earlier and talk a bit more about is that anxiety piece in the morning. So if we're beginning our day in an anxious way and we're feeling that anxiety and we're feeling that confusion and, and we're feeling that in our heads and in our hearts, I feel like that kind of sets the, the setting for the day, right? And so if you wake up like that and that's an everyday occurrence for you, kind of keep an eye out as to how the rest of your day goes. And you may notice that that is a theme throughout the day. Um, something that I had started doing a long time ago that really helped remove that anxiety in the morning because you have to be somewhere at a certain time. Kids got to be to school at a certain, you know what I mean? Like you're, you got some schedules happening in the morning. Typically, most of us do. Um, making lunches in the evening. Get lunches ready, ready to go. Get them packed, throw them in the fridge. That way, all you need to do is grab it and run in the morning. Um, preparing what you're going to wear the next day. I would always put, um, now my kid dresses himself, which is a lot easier now, but <laughs> back in the day, I would put his clothes out at night. So I didn't have to mess with that. I knew exactly what I was going to put him in. I knew, you know, that was all ready to go. The same with me. If I had an appointment that day, I needed to see a client, needed to do a meeting, whatever it is. And I had to make sure that what I was wearing was not wrinkly and... <laughs> <laughs> you know, look like I just rolled out of bed. You prepare that the night before. So then that way you're just kind of going through your morning and feeling a lot less anxiety because there are a lot less little things to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I mean, huge because yeah, if you wake up and you don't have a plan, you know, like, oh, I have to go to a doctor's appointment, but what does the rest of that look like? 
what happens is guess what we end up laying in bed longer we end up scrolling facebook way too long i mean there's a reason i don't have tiktok on my phone anymore because how many hours can pass <laughs> when you and you but, don't even know yeah and you don't even know i used to be like i'm going to bed honey and then all of a sudden you come to bed three hours later and i'm still there so you know getting prepared the night before is huge on knowing when you get up this is your plan something that i also do um, is I talk with my daughter about our day. And so, because when she wakes up, I'm usually on a zoom maybe or shortly after. And so I usually will, and she kind of doesn't have concept of time because she's only six, but she knows the things I do. So she knows, you know, power hours at this time. So if I say, okay, we've got to do this after power, I walk her through her day as we're doing bedtime. So as we're reading our story, I'll always tell her like, you know, today, mommy's going to get up. I'm going to go for a walk and then we're going to do breakfast. You're going to get dressed. You have to clean your room. And then I'm going to do power hour. I have one phone call after that phone call. I'm going to drop you to your friend's house. That was this morning, you know? And so I walk her through our day. Um, and that's how I get her prepared. Um, and then also, like you said, I look at my calendar for the next day. What documents do I need to print out? What, you know, meetings do I need to be at? Um, what do I have clean clothes? You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going and searching through the dryer for clothes makes me 20 minutes later for the gym than it would have if I had just gotten them out and put them on my dresser. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so that reduces so the anxiety and you don't feel like you're so all over the place and behind the eight ball constantly. Because mm -hmm. if I feel like I'm behind the eight ball, I'm behind the eight ball. Right. And then the whole day goes like that. I remember if I was late for one meeting by 10 minutes, then your whole day is 10 minutes behind. And at the end of that day, I mean, you lost an, almost an hour of your day yeah. when you add it up, which that freaks me out. I was doing math. Yet. If I wake up two hours earlier every day, that's an entire month I gain in a year. Yeah. That's Isn't nuts. That crazy? Wouldn't we all want an extra 30 days in our year? Like what could you get done? Yeah. No joke, but you got to plan that time. Yeah. You, you have to plan that it time wisely. <laughs> you can't get on TikTok, Crystal. Okay. With your extra two hours. <laughs> I don't have it on there, but it was realistically like 30 days of, we always say everyone, we all have 24 hours in our day. We all do. And we all end our day or end our month or end our year and say, gosh, I wish I just had more time. Yeah. And we're the only person that can realistically give ourselves more time. Totally agree. I love it. I love this topic so much. Crystal is this uh, tell us just really quick, a little bit about what you do, because obviously you're very knowledgeable for a reason. Of course, because you're wonderful, but <laughs> you help others do this, right? Can you like kind of tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So my, um, I own Grateful Being Health and Wellness, and actually I have been a health and wellness coach for three years. I'm scheduled. I'm scheduling that. I'm celebrating my three years in nine days. Um, and you probably are scheduling that though. <laughs> it is scheduled three <laughs> years. It's on my calendar. Um, I changed my life by shifting my habits and my mindset. And so what I get to help with people every day is working on 26 areas of optimal living an optimal health life, because health does not mean what we eat and moving our bodies. It is who we talk to, how we talk to ourselves, who we surround ourselves with, how we set our schedule, how we treat ourselves, our morning routines, our nighttime. It's everything, because if any of that is off, you're living a habits of disease. And so what I get to help people with is working on their physical health goals, their emotional health goals, their financial, um, and really dive into those small habits and how to switch our mindset into growth mindset rather than being kind of feeling stuck because I felt stuck for a very, very long time on this hamster wheel. Let's go to work. Let's come home. Let's have dinner. Let's put the kids to bed. Let's hang out on the couch and watch Netflix. Oh, repeat and yep. just keep doing it. And we were put here to live and experience, and we weren't put here to exist. And I love when I get to help clients feel physically better with energy and all of that. And then we can start working on emotionally, but, and then just create this life that fills them up with joy and fulfillment. So that's what I get to do every day. <laughs> I love it. And it's all connected. And mm -hmm. that was a big aha. I mean, I had this aha dec decades ago, but you know, some people who aren't as old as me might not have had that aha yet, but it's all connected. 
So your spiritual, your mindset, your physical, your mental, all of that, it's all connected. And like you said, when one of them is off, it's not going to create that, uh, that synchronicity perfect system for you. Yeah. I love that. And I think I, for a long time, didn't know that. Yeah. And my first thing was I had to set my side of pride and say, Hey, it's okay to get help and it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to get support and it's okay to lean into others and use them for accountability and all of that. And once I accepted that and, um, you know, now I have all these new systems and people and humans and things that create that. And so everyone deserves it. Absolutely agree. And where can our audience get in touch with you? I assume anyone can message you if they have questions or if they want to kind of learn a little bit more about what you do for others. Is that cool? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't have a, I'm, I'm, I want to build relationships with human beings. And so I don't have a website. I want to have conversations with people. There's no automated message. (laughs) Like I want to talk to people and hear what's important to them in their lives and what their goals are. And so realistically, I have my phone number. I have like a link tree app that when you go to it, it can bring you to a health evaluation and my Facebook Um, So that might be the best bet because you can fill out the health evaluation. It'll get shot over to me or they can go to my Facebook, add me, check me out, stalk me, whatever needs to happen. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. And then again, how did they find you on Facebook? I do have the link here in the show notes, but for those that are on the podcast. I guess it would just be Facebook uh, and then search for Crystal Wilson and then look for this pretty mug. But if it's on the (laughs) podcast, (laughs) uh, you'll just see Crystal Wilson and, you know, I'm public. So it's usually the first one that pops up. Or I will say, actually, you could go link. What is it? Link tree link tr dot ee slash grateful being. That's probably the easiest. (laughs) <laughs> awesome. Well, for those of you who connected with Crystal Hero, what she has to say, definitely reach out to her. She's a wonderful woman to know. I have known her for years. I know her mama. And she's <laughs> also a wonderful woman to know too. So thank you so much for being with us today, Crystal. And if thank you me. guys want to check out any of our previous shows, hop on over to our YouTube channel. It is at Mom Nation USA. That is our handle. Or if you are more of the podcast version, maybe you like to hike a lot, bike a lot, drive a lot, whatever it is. Hop on over to your favorite podcast platform and do a quick search for Mom Nation Talk Radio. And you can connect with all of our shows there. So our podcast channel works a little bit differently than other podcasts where we don't just have kind of one topic, one show. All of our shows, all of our content, everything is pushed through that one channel. So like, subscribe, get the notifications, click the little bell, all the things, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much, Crystal. Bye. Bye.